burnout, again, many people are familiar with the term. Um, when I talk to residents and medical students, fewer people are familiar with the fact that there's actually a formal definition of burnout. It's an intuitive definition, but it has three domains. First, emotional exhaustion, which is kind of similar in terms of feeling depleted. Um, cynicism and depersonalization. So unfortunately, many people have had the experience of seeing a doctor who is callous and saying things about patients as if they are objects, and that's not okay. Um, burnout is not never an excuse, but sometimes, while it may be that that doctor is just a jerk, uh, it can be a sign of burnout as well if this is sort of uh, a change from prior. Um, Depersonalization is also necessary to some extent for us to do our work. You can't uh, get completely emotionally invested constantly in every single facet of your work, or you wouldn't be able to get through the day. Um, but when this is the dominant way of interacting with patients or uh, feeling connect not feeling connected to your job, that could be a sign of burnout. And then sense of ineffectiveness at work. Um, interestingly for physicians, because physicians still tend to rate their job as inherently meaningful, this is less of a driver in physicians, but is a strong driver in some fields. If you're going to boil burnout down into the crux of what it is, it's really a mismatch in the workplace between desired state and reality. If you ask a medical student why they want to be a doctor, Nine times out of 10, when you're reading personal statements, somewhere in there, it'll say, I love science and I want to help people. Um, and that is the ideal state of being a doctor. But when all this other stuff happens, it can feel pretty dissociated from that ideal state. So the degree to which the ideal state is separated from current reality is the space where burnout lives. Another really important distinction is that burnout is not the same thing as depression. The outward manifestations can appear similar, and it sometimes can be difficult to distinguish among the two. There are validated tools to examine dimensions of both, um, and uh, there is some suggestion that those who've experienced depression in the past may be at somewhat higher risk for burnout, although that association is complex and has not been um, determined as causal. Um, and uh, people can be burned out without being depressed, and they can be depressed without being burned out, although they do often coexist, um, especially uh, in times when the work life and personal life overlap quite a bit, like residency. Um, the main distinction with burnout is that it primarily affects the work life. So the one question to distinguish whether someone's experienced burn burnout or depression is, are these symptoms persistent when you're at home, when you're on vacation, when you have a day off? Is this how you're still feeling? Um, and if the answer is no, I feel like a full person when, I'm, when I have a day off um, and I'm totally happy when I'm on my vacation, then burnout is, is more likely. Um, the reason it's important to distinguish is uh, not for semantics sake, but because the treatments are different. We'll, we'll go into some of the interventions that address burnout, and we know for depression, psychotherapy and medications are essential elements of treatment. Um, and if you don't include those, then you won't make a lot of headway on depression. Uh -huh.